brackish fish, such as the mudskipper, have increased in popularity, and there's always interest in saltwater fish, such as clownfish. If you have questions about testing saltwater, come along with me, and I'll provide you some answers. Welcome, fellow fish keepers. Uh, it's Mike here with the Fish Tank Barn. I'd like to welcome you back to another video. So today we're going to talk about the most important tool you're going to need uh, when you're going to set up your new mudskipper brackish tank or your new saltwater tank. And that is going to be uh, something to test the salinity in your water. So when we're testing our salt water, what we're looking to measure is the specific gravity. So when we talk about specific gravity, what we're actually looking to measure is the density of the water. So normal tap water has a density of 1.0, uh, while your full salt water tank will have a density generally between 1.024 to 1.026. And then looking at a brackish tank uh, can be anywhere from 1.003 to 1.015. So to test your specific gravity, i.e. salinity, uh, there's actually three methods we can use to do that. Uh, you can use a swing arm hydrometer, uh, you can use a refractometer, and thirdly they do have some electronic products out there now like salinity pens and scientific grade testing equipment. So to perform this important function I am going to recommend that you do use the refractometer and here's the reason why. So while the hydrometer is a cheap option, uh, definitely cheaper than the refractometer, uh, there are some limitations to it. Uh, one, uh, over time the material will degrade and it will give you inaccurate readings. Uh, two, uh, you can't get bubbles stuck in the actual swing arm of the hydrometer itself, therefore causing it to be inaccurate as well. And also it is not temperature calibrated. So therefore as the temperature changes, the specific gravity will change, giving you an inaccurate reading. And then conversely, on the other side, the scientific grade equipment uh, can run you anywhere from, call it $80, all the way up to $150 and even higher. So from that point, I really don't think it's cost effective if you're running one or two brackish aquariums to go out and start buying scientific grade equipment. So I really think the refractometer is the best choice to go with, with this important job. So how a refractometer works is basically uh, you put your water on this lens here then you put the lens cover over it and then as the light comes through here it will actually refract the light and so how much it refracts the light is how much uh, density that your water has uh, so what it will do then is it will then project it on a screen uh, generally it's a blue color so where the blue color and the white intersect is actually what your specific gravity reading would be so let's go ahead and unbox this unit now so the first thing we have in here is the actual refractometer device itself uh, then we have a pipette and also inside here is the tiny screwdriver you need to adjust the calibration screw in the actual unit itself. The one thing that I did misplace from this is the cloth that's used to clean up the lens. So you can use some other sort of soft material to clean the lens as well. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description of this video uh, just so you guys know that is an affiliate link so I do get a tiny commission from it but does not change your price. So let me walk you through some of the parts that are on this unit as well. And then uh, you've got the flap, uh, you've got your lens here, and then this is the uh, adjustment screw. It's actually got a plastic cover on it. And then this is your lens, so you would actually look through the unit like this. It is important to calibrate your refractometer on a fairly regular basis just to ensure that you are getting proper readings from it uh, so you're not making mistakes and possibly harming your fish. Uh, I would say to do it about once a month or so. And then from a testing perspective, you should actually test about once a week. So we have our um, refractometer here, and we have our calibration solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to drip some on here. All right, so we're going to put down the top. And then make sure there's not any air bubbles in it. So we're just going to look through like so, uh, finding a, a pretty decent light source so we can see. Uh, and then if you need to adjust it, you can adjust it just using the knob here and you can adjust your focus on it. So just kind of like a set of binoculars. So our reading did come back at about 1.026, so we are calibrated. So if you were needing to calibrate it, this right here is the calibration screw. And so you would have to, you would pop this off. And then you have this little screwdriver that goes in here and you would just screw it up back and forth and make it so once it says 1.026 you'll be completely calibrated. So before we actually go and test our clownfish breeding setup, uh, we are going to go ahead here and clean the unit off. Uh, so I did get some clean water 
Uh, you would want to use the cleanest water you can get, uh, either like the chlorinated tap water. Um, in this case, I run mine through a push filter and some other filtration systems. So all you're going to want to do here is just spray off this with some clean water. And then uh, you're going to use your cloth and dry it off. Uh, otherwise, you'll get salt residue on it, and that could actually throw off your readings. Let's go ahead and head upstairs to the clownfish breeding setup, and we'll go ahead and get a sample to test the water in that system. All right, we are at one of my clownfish breeding tanks now, so we're going to go ahead and get a sample. So you can see now that the pipette is full of salt water, so let's go ahead and take that downstairs and get a test. So let's go ahead now and test the second sample from the clownfish breeding setup using the same method that we used when we calibrated the refractometer itself. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look. All right, so that's at about 1.020, uh, maybe a little less. So even though that does seem low compared to reef levels, uh, I do run my saltwater breeding fish at a little bit lower salinity. Uh, just kind of helps out with some of the expensive actually running a saltwater breeding program. Uh, I know there's a lot of breeders that do do that. Uh, so let's go ahead here and talk a little bit for just a moment. Uh, now that we've taken our readings about uh, if we wanted to actually add salt to our system. So what I'm going to say uh, basically is you want to add it slowly. Uh, just like pH swings in fresh water. Uh, adding salt too quickly uh, can harm your, your fish. So definitely you'd want to take, take it slow. Uh, actually you'd want to increase it. Uh, depending on how far you'd want to go, uh, you'd really want to do it over a period of days. So, for example, if I wanted to run the clownfish breeding setup uh, up to a 1.026 reef level, I would probably do that over a series of days. Uh, so I'd probably do it in three or four days, slowly kind of gradually increasing it and letting the fish get used to each salinity bump. And maybe even waiting a day in between each time I raise the salinity. So definitely, you know, don't rush it if you need to raise your salinity, uh, either in your brackish tank or in your saltwater marine tank. Uh, take it slow and your fish will be okay. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, go ahead and put that into the comments section. Uh, definitely will answer you there. Uh, so that being said, uh, if you, this is your first time visiting with us, uh, check out the videos that come here at the end. And if you like what you see, uh, hit that subscription button, ding the notification bell and all of the other computer-generated things that YouTube would like you to do. So, that being said, stay fishy, keep on breeding, and I'll catch you on the next video.